Have you ever had to wait a really long time for something like a like a birthday party? Well, my daughter told me the other day that it was 36 more days until her birthday, and she was getting everything ready for this party. He said, but God's people, they too were waiting for something. They were waiting for a, a Savior, or they called the Messiah. You see, in the first book of the Bible, in Genesis, there was a great problem. God's people did evil against him, and they brought evil, they brought sin into the world. But God also promised that he would send a Savior, a rescuer, to rescue them from their sins. You see, um, God used someone called prophets, and they wrote these things down. They wrote down the details of what the Messiah would be like. And in one such book in the Bible, there was a prophet named Micah. In Micah chapter 5, verse 2, he records that this Messiah would be born in the city of Bethlehem. Do you know who was born in Bethlehem? A baby? We celebrate his birth during Christmas. That's right, it's Jesus. He was born in Bethlehem, just like this prophet had said hundreds of years before. Well, when Jesus was grown and he was a man, he had 12 disciples or followers, and they were going into the city of Jerusalem. But before they went into the city, Jesus told his fault, two of his disciples to go get a donkey. Actually, a donkey's colt, so a baby donkey. And he was going to ride that donkey into the city of Jerusalem. You know, this too was recorded in the book of Zechariah by, by this prophet in chapter 9, verse 9, that Jesus, the Messiah, would ride into the city on a donkey colt. Wow! You see, these things written down in God's Word these things written a long time ago came true. See, what if I told you today that in the future you are going to be a great doctor or a, a, a famous basketball star or artist? And then that day came and it was true. It happened. Well, see, that's the same thing with God's Word. And these prophets, prophets, prophecies or future events, they came true just as God had said they would. See, that shows us that we can trust God's Word, but we can trust that the Messiah, the Savior, He is the promised one. You know, and maybe you know people who don't know Jesus as your Savior, who don't believe this. Well, you see, you can study, study God's Word, pray and prepare your heart because you can share with them these promises and the hope that you have in Christ, that these things are true and we can trust them. You see, God's people um, were prepared, were getting ready for this Savior. Well, one day, Jesus and his disciples, were, they were going into that city, riding on that donkey, and there was lots of people all over, and children, they were yelling out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's what that meant, that they were looking for that Savior, and that they were taking their palm branches, and they were pulling them out, and laying them on the ground for Jesus to ride through on his donkey. Wow! Do you see these people? Not all of them were believing that Jesus was the Savior of the world. See, they wanted something else. They wanted this J Jesus, the Savior, to rescue them from their problem of the Roman Empire. You see, at that time, the Roman government was evil, right? They would throw them in jail for no reason, have the Jews killed, and take away their possessions and property. See, they thought he had come to rescue them from the Roman Empire. But that's not why he came. Jesus came for a far worse problem a greater problem, a problem of sin. And that's something that we all have, right? We all sin. We all lie. We all maybe at times cheat, have bad attitudes. And none of us can go like this and go, I'm going to try my best to be perfect and never do wrong because we can't do it. You see, our sins, they separate us from God. And we need God. We need the rescuer, the Savior. And that's the whole reason why Jesus came. He came and, and, and people took him and they beat him severely, placed him on a cross where they put nails to his hands and through his feet. And he died a painful, painful death to save you from your sins. And then they placed him in a grave. And three days later, the scripture says that he came back to life. This is, this is not a made-up story. This is true. That what happened? Jesus did this to rescue you. And the scripture says in 1 John 4.14, it tells us that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. See, that's Jesus, the Son of God, came to rescue us, to save us from, from our greatest problem of sin. But as, as the Jews and all the, the people were there gathered, some of them looked at Jesus and they hated him. Oh, they wanted him to die. And they were looking and waiting for opportunities when he would be alone where they can kill him. But you know, as you're hearing this today, 
and you're hearing about these, these, these stories, these prophecies that have come true, where do you stand? What do you believe? And I want to encourage you today to trust in Jesus, knowing that your sins, they separate you from God. And Jesus, he's the only one who can rescue you. And as it says in Acts 16, 31, it says, believe in the Lord Jesus. That means trust completely in Jesus and you will be saved. Saved from the greatest problem we all have, and that is sin. He will rescue you. And you know, you don't have to wait anymore. You can know that that Savior has come and there's no more waiting. He's rescuing you. Can, you can celebrate that you have been forgiven, that you are in God's family and saved from the greatest problem of sin. That is good news. Remember kids, if you like our videos, remember to like, subscribe, and share.